please make welcome Reverend Toyen Williams. Toyen Wright, oh my welcome, gosh. Welcome. Williams, a wonderful prophet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Toyen Wright. Oh my gosh. That's all right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is awesome. It is absolutely a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, greetings to Apostle Dr. Nicolene Williams and Minister Christopher Williams and all the ministers that are in the house and just all the evangelists that are online, you know, whether you are declared evangelists or not, as the sister said earlier, we're all evangelists in the Lord. So greetings to every single one of you. And I can say greetings family because I am family now at this point. I am no longer a stranger, right? I declare myself family. Amen. Um, yes, I am really, truly, truly, truly honored to be here this morning because I know this was God's orchestration. He did this. He chose this moment, this hour for me to be here. And I know he spoke into my spirit. I know he spoke into apostle's spirit when he did this. So I am honored. Today, I'm not going to linger on, on anything else. I'm going to go right into what God has said, right? So today, I'm listening to everybody and I'm hearing bits and pieces of what God has said to me. But I'm like, okay, God, you want point. Um, this Our topic today is God will deliver your bloodline. Amen. And we are going to read from Joshua 2, from verse 1 to 14. Okay, bear with me while I read the scripture. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out at Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there are men in hither to tonight of the children of Israel to search out our, co our country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered in thine house, for they come, for they be come to search out all the country. And the women took the two men and hid them, and the woman took the two men and hid them and said, Thus, there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went I what not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye are ye shall overtake them. But she brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them in the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And men and the men pursued after them the way that to Jordan onto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that the terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For you, for we have heard of the Lord, of how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. And when you came out of Egypt, what he did to uh, two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sheon and, God, and Og, whom utterly destroy, who he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. The Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, I swear unto you by the Lord, since I showed you kindness, that ye shall also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token that ye shall save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours, if you utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that he will deal kindly and truly with thee. Amen. Here in the reading of God's word, we honor it by saying, Amen. Amen. God gave me three words when he gave me this 
word today. He said, repentance, restoration, renewal. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes a sequence of direct ancestry, right? Um, especially, so bloodline is what I'm de defining, sorry. It's a sequence of direct ancestors, especially in the pedigree. Um, in estate planning, your estate is can be passed on to your bloodline. And it can be said that you plan your estate in such a way that it can only be passed on to your legacy, which is your bloodline, meaning no other outsiders, whether you're married into the family or not, can get your estate. People take extra precautions to do this. And if you want to do it, go ahead. Um, find out how, you know, that's great, right? In the scripture, we are told about Rahab. Rahab is a prostitute as per scripture, right? Oh, if some of us was to go to ancestry.com and look up our genealogy and saw a Rahab in our genealogy, we would not claim her, name her, or tell anybody about her because we don't want to be tainted with prostitutes and people of ill repute in our genealogy. We want that it seems like our bloodline is pure. We would want to not publicize that so others can talk about us and where we come from and, you know, you know, come from good, nothing good, right? You know, come from good stock. You want to be known as a person who's come from good stock. Yeah? Yet and still, God wants to highlight this interaction with Rahab to show forth his delivering power. It is the point in scriptures when we come up on Rahab that we see repentance. And I never, before going through the study of this, I never even thought of Rahab as repenting. But when she said unto the men, I know of the Lord your God. I know what he is capable of doing. We've heard men's hearts are failing them for fear for the God of Israel, right? When she made that connection with the men and said, save my family, in her heart, she repented because she recognized. How do you repent? You have to recognize that God is, right? And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek you. Is that what that scripture says? She recognized God. You understand? But we, we don't go, the Bible doesn't go into the backstory of what happened next to her and all this other stuff. It, does, it doesn't go into deep. But think about it. Recognize it. Acknowledging God as Lord and Savior. She came to a point of repentance. Right? And I know the theologians are going to say, no, I don't think so. But let me tell you something. That's what the Lord told me. So I'm going to give it to you the way God gave it to me. Okay. So he must know because he was there in it. All right. Take it up with Jesus. All right. Amen. Right. So he was surrendered. She surrendered. Right. But not only in that moment did she make a vow for her life. And she could have just said, hey, remember me when you, when we, when you do this. She said, remember my father, remember my mother, remember my brother, remember my sister, and everything concerning them. In essence, she was making a plea, not just for her life, but for the life of her bloodline. You see? It? So here's it now. Some of us, we get saved and we are all good and dandy. But do we pray for the people who are connected to us? Because it's supposed to be, and for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, right? So when I'm coming to the recognition of who God is, am I connecting my family to the God that I serve? So if we're repenting, if we have our repentant heart, we have to know, ask God, and speak to God on the behalf of our family members. And don't wait till they get to a funeral service and you're crying out, oh God, him never did know God. Hello? All right, moving on. Right? 
she recognized the God of Israel. It's due to that encounter that Rahab, who was not of Jewish culture, got connected with Jewish people. It's something to have an encounter with God. Because in one encounter, God can take someone who is not of any, or take you from a place where you're like, you, you, you don't know anything, you don't have no relig religious background or anything, and turn you into something wonderful. Make sense? Definitely. Yes. Right? It was this Rahab that turned around and married an Israelite. I tell you, she repented, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Because she followed after the city was destroyed, after the gate, the, the walls come down, everything. She was hanging up with the Israelites. She married an Israelite. His name was Solomon. Go look up a genealogy if you don't believe me. I promise you. I looked it up. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. This marriage led to the birth of one called Boaz. Rahab the prostitute married a man named Salman and out of this marriage and out of the contact that she had with God's people, right? And with God that day, this woman who was no deed prostitute of irrepute, nobody don't want anything to do with her, gave birth to Boaz. Now, I don't need to say who Boaz is because every single female ever is looking for a Boaz, right? Waiting for her Boaz. And Boaz is like the hallmark of what a man should be in the sight of the actually Christian girls. I can't wait for God to bless me with my Boaz. His mom was a prostitute. That turned from prostitution because of the God of Israel. You see it? All right. So here it is that she gave birth to Boaz. And Boaz turned around and married a woman who other people didn't want to associate with. His Ruth. A Moabite. Sean, do you know this to be happening? And it is at this point where we see restoration. Because Ruth had lost everything. She had lost her husband. And now she had to leave her people. Which even though we say, yes, she left and she willingly left. But can you imagine leaving your mommy and your daddy and everything you know behind to follow after a woman who was just your mother-in-law? She had lost everything. She was grieving, okay? The, the family in which she was connected to Naomi had lost everything, right? And with Naomi losing everything, they need to be restored unto God. They need to know that there was a God who can restore them. And God used Boaz, the son of Rahab, to restore a generation. You following me? Tell me if you can hear me because I know before Amen. there were some people that were in and out. Okay. Amen. So I'm not sure if, if, if my internet is off or not. All right? Yeah, we're hearing you. Yes. So God used the son Boaz the son of a prostitute, to marry a Moabite, to restore a people, a generation. You following me? Following. Amen. Amen. When you travel further down the bloodline, of which the prostitute and the Moabite are a part, you find people like David and King Solomon 
right? Because Boaz union with Ruth gave you what Obed. And Obed gave you Jesse. And Jesse is who? The father of David. And David is who? The father of Solomon. The great King Solomon. Right? Rest restoring that which God has already promised. Mind you, the bloodline goes way be before Rahab. But God wanted me to start there. Okay? Prostitute. The Moabite. Repentance, restoration, right? And if we go even further down, and mind you, David, Solomon, all this was, they were prophesied. And the next prophecy that came out of that was that the person who is most important in all of this story is Jesus. What's going further down the bloodline is Jesus which had been prophesied that he would come through the line of David. Yeah? Are we, are we talking about scriptures? Amen. Right? Amen. And so he introduced to the man from the throne. His name was Joseph. And Joseph was an earthly father, or a son earthly father of Jesus. Hence, continuous. The blood, the bloodline. But here's the thing. You ask me, what's the difference even between restoration and renewal? Restoration aims to return something to its original state, right? In the case of Ruth and Naomi, they needed to be restored. Their family's legacy needed to be restored to its original state. That's what Bo that's where Boaz came in, right? Renewal. It's something that's never faded, right? It, re it restores something that has faded or disintegrated, right? It it's a continuous thing. Renewal is a continuous process. Restoration, on the other hand, is sometimes, is usually a one-time process, right? It's a one-time project, whereas renewal is continuous. We meet Jesus who brings forth the renewal part of this story. It is... In the bloodline that brings renewal to all of us, that gave us salvation, right? Jesus in the bloodline transforms us completely, putting us through a process continuously that we are forever renewed in his sight so that we can have union with him. We can have union with the Godhead. And we have the promise of eternal life. This Jesus is the deliverer. In the bloodline. The same bloodline. Where if you look at the genetic markers. The prostitute and the Moabite. Was a part of. And God wanted me to say to you today. In every generation. He says. God chooses one. He chooses one. In spite of your past. He chooses you in spite of where you come from, who your mama, daddy, auntie, uncle, cousin, friend was. He chooses one in spite of what you may have done. He says, choose one in every generation. Amen? Amen. 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 Love Amen. In Rahab and Ruth, and Ruth a blending of the pedigree. People who were outcasts. People who would not have mattered. People who would not have been chosen otherwise. To blend into the bloodline of Jesus. The deliverer. The savior. The rescuer. So that you can do a new thing. It's not. Concerned with your past. He's not so concerned with what the story about you in the city is. He's not concerned if your story is that of a prostitute or that of a Moabite. His concern is that he chose you for the generation, for such a time as this, to deliver his word, to make a difference, to be the one person in your family serves almighty God 
chooses God to be the one person to lead a generation of people who had never known the God of Israel to God. To your victory of your family and story. There's some of us, we, or we come from families that are jailbirds. And all we know from generation to generation is that family members after family members have gone to jail. There's some of us that when you look at us, our families tainted, that we can't even mention our name in communities because people look down on us because of where we come from. But God seems to tell you today that in your generation, he's chosen you. Go and on. singing earlier, while the, while the praise and worship was singing earlier, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. He said, Toyen, not only did I do that, but you have to re recognize that in the bloodline, Ren Habi, she turned her life around, right? And she gave it to God. Ruth surrendered to God at God's feet and lived for her, in her country. He reminded me of my grandmother. After she did not know anything about God, did not know anything about serving the Almighty God, who had gone through all kinds of abuse, who had gone through growing up with a mother and a father to care for her. He went past the third grade, went to a tent meeting one night, and she confirmed in her community to say, when people can um, tank culture, and I don't know what the disease is called, they go to heaven and she stood. The, the thing to me and I said, God, I want to catch this disease because I don't want to go to heaven. This woman is in a third, more than a third grade education. God taught her to read, to read in the scriptures. She became a prayer warrior that rescued her family, that raised us up under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And it's the word of God. I'm the product of that woman. So sometimes we despise the bloodline we come from. But do you understand that some of us have some people in our past that God made some connection with? There was one time God told me, I made a covenant promise over your life with your grandmother. So I can't break that covenant. So whatever you do, you have to surrender to me because of that covenant. told me to tell you today that it's through you that he's going to break some generational curses and deliver your bloodline today and it doesn't matter what your bloodline look like I don't care if you are your workers or whatever in the past God said to tell you today he's delivering you and not just you, but your entire bloodline. But here's the thing that got me about Rahab's story. That she didn't secure her future alone. She secured of her family and her bloodline. She could not have known that the great almighty God would come through her bloodline. She would not have known. When God rescues you and delivers you, it's not just for you, but it's for generations to come. Because he's not just God in one generation. He's God in this generation, the generation to come, and the generations that were before you. Amen. Amen. In every generation, he chooses a remnant. We live in a generation where people are, their hearts are filling them. They are refusing to serve God. Also, they're turning away from the things of the Lord. And God is saying, I choose you, Danelia. Choose you, Dina. Choose you, Nicolene. Oh, almighty God, it doesn't matter what you look like, what your past look like. I choose you. This is her. And this is the thing about me, God said, it doesn't matter what people, even in your bloodline, said about you. Because sometimes, believe me or not, it's, it's, it's a family member that tear you down. Sometimes it's people in your own family that's refused to lift you up. But 
God says, I will restore you. I'll, I'll cause repentance to happen. And he told me this is a time I'll cause some of those people who spoke ill of you to repent before you. God is here to break every generational curse. Please understand that God chose the a Moabite and, and, and Ammonite and all these people to be in his genealogy because he wanted to, he wanted his people to know that none is left behind, that all is included. He's all inclusive God. Whatever your story. Whatever your problem, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, whatever, 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 whatever. God says, I choose you because I, God, the almighty sovereign God is going to deliver your bloodline. And eradicate any other thing. Do you know anything else about Rahab before the point of, of meeting with these spies? Do you, do you know anything else? Nothing. And purpose. God never tells me she was five years old and just drop and skin her knee. We didn't need to know that. God says, I'm going to walk the slate clean for you. Because you've spoken of you before an encounter with me. In this where I'm taking you. Prostitute. The prostitute is still being heard of today. She's long gone. When you read Hebrews, hello. The prostitute, the woman of ill repute, walk of faith, right here with Abraham. Amen. It's not about what people think about you. It's not about what people have said about you. It's not about the things you've had to allow yourself to sing to just to survive until this time. It's not about the things you've had to do just to make it to this point. It's not about that. It's about you coming into recognition of the God of Israel. Surrendering who you are to the God of Israel. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the God of Toyen and, and Apostle and Daniel surrendering yourself to this God. And no, you are great God and you are able to do great and mighty things. So here I am, God, I surrender all to you. Allowing the God who even after you lost all, even after you have to leave all, even after you have to let go of every single thing, you have to deny yourself. And, and sometimes that's painstaking because it's not always easy. Because some of us are leaving some things that we think are pleasurable and, and, and some things that we think is easy because it's, been, it's become comfortable, because it's become our practice and we've done it for so long and it's fed me and it's fed my family and it's, and it's taken care of me and I don't have to depend on these people over here because they're going to put their foot on my neck and God is saying, leave on it. And Guru had to leave everything she knew. Restoration to happen. It's not about, it's not about, and here's the thing that got me too with the story. Jesus being in the bloodline of Rahab. Jesus wasn't into that bloodline, but he was addicted into the 
family. Because Joseph is not his mom. Let's talk biology, right? God is Jesus' father, yeah? Joseph was only his earthly chosen father. Some of us, we don't know. Let me, Holy Spirit. Some of us, we don't know family. Family to us is not the people who we are into, that we are blood to. Family to us are some strangers who decided to take us up. Some strangers who went against the green. Some strangers who went against what everybody has said about you to hold on to you for their life. God says, here's the thing. If you allow me to add you into my family, I will renew you. Adopt you. So I can renew you. We adopted into the family of the King of Kings. Are we not? Are we not? Amen. But it's true that adoption that God renews us. So he said, He's not going to forsake you. Even in your bloodline, want nothing to do with you. I'm your new family. I'm changing your name. You said to Abraham, leave everybody. I will show you. Oh. I'm ending. I'm coming to an end. But I will say this. God wants you to repent so he can restore and he can renew you. And not just for you, but for everyone connected to you. And understand, I want you to understand this when I say this. People who are connected to you are not just the people you know now, but the people you are going to meet. As I said, Rahab could not have imagined Jesus in her bloodline. She covered them. She covered even Jesus himself. <laughs> Does that make sense? When she said, not just me, but my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, and everything concerning them. I will say this of you. Truth seekers, speakers, right? It's not just about the people you're connected to by blood, but it's about the ministry you're connected to. Amen. In the, Amen. Hunting, in the restoration, in the renewal, God will bless this ministry immensely. Souls that we are assigned to, every last one of us. Together. And so to that, delay in their deliverance. I often tell the story of how I was at a convention, a, a youth convention. And there's this girl at the altar. She was being delivered from demons. And when we got to the last demon, this thing spoke. This thing said, I'm not coming out. And his reason for not coming out or saying he's not coming out was that if he comes out, her life will touch 6,000 people. He said, what? Because he said, all I heard was, if a demon can recognize 
your life is touched to so many people that will get given through your ministry. Now we are recognizing the power of God that dwells on the inside of us. That is able to deliver, not just us, but our mother, our father, our auntie, our uncle, our cousin, our friend, our cousin, our cousin three times removed, the neighbor and the dog. Amen. We don't recognize that when we accept God, when we know him to cause repentance in our hearts and restoration and renewal our lives make a difference when we go to the job our lives make a difference and to the road our lives make a difference sometimes we the only bible person will ever read So if we want God to deliver our bloodline, I'm going to ask you to pull our Rahab and repent before God. Ruth, and I know God to take you out of where you are and what you know, what you think you know, and turn over everything to him, surrender everything to him, surrender to his plan. After him, so he can restore you and put it inside Jesus, so he can renew you. God bless you. Mm -hmm.